Spencer. We'll have a few more speakers, uh, and Ron will introduce your, your next round of speakers. But first, here's Ron. Thanks, Tom. Uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge the elected people that are here today. They came up for the uh, press conference early in their Bazaran. Um, Councillor Gail Gibbon, who's the uh, chair of the regional district, and this is a regional EOC. Uh, Councillor Singh and Maxine. And uh, I'd also like to acknowledge that um, we have a director, in this case, EOC director, CAO uh, uh, Jim. Um, from Zafino, from West Kelowna, and again a reminder that that's why you sometimes see multiple directors. This is a regional center. If you walked in the room, you'd see people from Peachland Lake Country, West Kelowna, Kelowna, and West Bank First Nations here. And uh, the director chair uh, moves as it needs to. I just happen to be the uh, lucky person today. Um, so we're here today to talk about uh, this uh, continuing event. Uh, it's, uh, it's uh, slow, uh, moments a little bit like being in the left field, uh, uh, moments of uh, you know, boredom punctuated by uh, minutes of sheer terror, and, uh, and we've had all of those over the last month. But the lake keeps, uh, uh, the situation evolves, and so do some of our uh, predictions and planning. We're now using the number of 343.5 as a planning number, and this is the number we're using, I'm gonna explain a little bit later, uh, to analyze uh, what we need to do to protect uh, against rising waters. It's, uh, and, and what residents should be using uh, as well. And, uh, and it is extremely complicated. We'll get into some of that. Uh, uh, each resident, if you're on the lake, depending on whether you're in an area that gets prone to wind versus calm, uh, may make a difference between how high you actually uh, build your measures. So this will continue to evolve. Uh, the snowpack at higher elevation continues to melt. We're about a third now. Uh, down, but there's still lots of snow that has to come down. And that's the main driver of lake levels because it, it flows into Mission Creek. And of course, Mission Creek is the big artery. We have a number of creeks that feed in. Uh, that's the largest. Uh, temperatures, as you see today, will, will warm up over the next couple of days. And you pretty much watch the graph and Mission Creek will start uh, picking up steam. Uh, unfortunately, by the weekend, uh, we should have cooler weather, slow the meltdown, but of course, we're gonna be adding rain to that. And rain is one of the wild cards that makes this so difficult to predict. Another is groundwater. Uh, uh, groundwater seems to be a factor, and it's not something that's easily uh, determined as to how much that's adding to this. And it's also something that our homeowners have to uh, deal with because we can hold back the lake, uh, the sandbags, but we can't stop groundwater from seeping up. So throughout the city over the next month you'll see roads uh, partially closed or closed as, as groundwater now moves at the lake level moves up starts uh, moving up into some of the roads and again very difficult to control or predict uh, working with our um, regional partners and the other senior levels of government we did some predictive modeling and that's some of the things you see today with a team of data analysts looking at uh, every bit of information that's available on the web, and you've all seen it, uh, lake levels, historic lake levels, snowpack, rain. Took all that historical information we could and started to see if there were patterns that we could help use to, to determine where we might be for planning purposes. And that's where the 343 came up. So we used uh, historic lake levels, snow melt rates, uh, how much water's let out at the gates in Penticton, historical weather patterns, and even wind mapping to, to try to determine um, what some of those levels may actually hit. So snowpack, uh, it's a great example of one of those numbers. Um, right here on uh, my left, you see a graph showing the snowpack, and what you see is that uh, it's actually late this year. And that, that's led to some of the questions where people say, why did they let water earlier? Well, it's also, uh, it's also late. Uh, it, uh, it was almost looking like uh, a lower than average year, uh, and then we got great spring skiing. Uh, not that anybody necessarily loves great spring skiing, but uh, that's what happened. So you can see this, the graph, uh, the red graph is 1990, and you can see the melt went way out and then down. 1997, which is a year that tracking very similar to this year, except for we're a little later in everything. Um, 
follow this trajectory to the Frechette ending about June 11th. It went as late as June 25th in uh, 1990, and 2017, as I said, seems to be tracking at least on the same trajectory that we saw in 1997 that would put the end of the Frechette around June 17th, June 15th, 17th. This shows, again, uh, and this is all information that's readily available on the internet. Uh, but again, there's, uh, you know, there's multiple inputs. As usual, I didn't follow my script, so at this point in time, bear with me as I uh, go back and try to find out what's happening. Um, so once the snowpack is gone, um, the lake will, will stabilize, but it'll take a long time. And I think it's really important for people to understand that it's just not gonna stop one day and then you know, within a week be gone. Uh, it could take a very long time for that lake to recede. If, uh, if the lake uh, levels are, are being let out at current rates, uh, we're, we're talking about 11 centimeters, as you can figure out 11 centimeters a week, it could take an awful long time to get back to something that resembles normal. And so uh, what does that mean? That means that the sandbags will be in place waiting for wind events. Uh, we saw some of those wind events the other day, just last night in fact, and until the lake stabilizes and, and starts drawing down, uh, it's going to be a slow um, recovery as we uh, try to bring the city, cities back to uh, a normal state. I should say that um, the rise will slow down. Uh, the lake's gone up at a slower rate uh, last night. Pick up for the next couple of days with the warm weather. Uh, we've ordered, uh, we have an additional 200,000 sandbags uh, that were brought in. We're trying to get another half million that's expected today or tomorrow. And uh, those sandbags and the sand and the ability to fill them and the ability to get them on site uh, may take some time. So we ask for patience. Uh, you know, it doesn't look like anything's going to rise all that quickly. Uh, so we ask for some patience from our citizens uh, as, those, uh, as we prepare to um, go through and determine where we need to shore up. And we ask individuals, and now you've been uh, on the waterfront, you've been looking at this for a while, you saw the effects of the windstorm, you probably have a pretty good idea how many more sandbags you might need uh, yourself without necessarily surveying it. Uh, and I'd like to acknowledge uh, the landowners and the local partners and all the guys that um, we don't see uh, but are out there working for local government in their public service areas and public works. Uh, they've been working long day and nights in Peachland, and Lake Country, Kelowna, uh, uh, everywhere to try to get those sandbags in place and monitor them and fix them <laughs> every single night. Um, I'd like to now call on uh, Brent Magnum from the city of uh, uh, West Kelowna to, he's our advanced planning chief, and uh, to explain what he did with the uh, new number as, a, as the advanced planning chief. Uh, thank you, Ron. So the planning team has uh, basically taken the, uh, the new predictive 343.5 uh, level and produced a series of flood advisory maps, which we are um, sort of just in process of releasing. Um, and really they show two things. Uh, one is what the uh, surface mapping would look like, what the surface water levels would look like uh, should the lake reach 343.5. That's the red maps that you're seeing um, displayed here today. Uh, and also we're working currently on what that subsurface mapping would also look like. And that subsurface mapping is the area uh, below the ground level where the water table will rise, which you may not see uh, on the ground, but you will see if you're a resident of those areas in those neighborhoods that are close to the lake. Uh, you may see it show up in your basements, you may see it show up in some of your, your sumps and, and areas like that. That information is uh, just being prepared right now, we will be releasing it um, shortly. Um, so what we're seeing here in these red areas is the 343.5. Our areas of primary concern are really in, um, in the city of Kelowna, essentially between Poplar Point and in the Manhattan Point areas. We're looking from the bridge uh, down, to, um, down to the Kelowna General Hospital as well as the areas uh, just on the window over there uh, in the Malcolm Mission Creek, and that's the areas uh, directly related to the Trustwell, uh, Bluebird, and Cook Road areas. Uh, as well, we've also identified areas in Peachland uh, in the area of Beach Avenue as well as Lake Avenue, which we may be seeing some of that, that um, inundation areas or areas where you're gonna see some, 
the, some, some of the groundwater rising. And as you can appreciate it, as Ron had uh, mentioned, that it's, it's a little bit difficult to maybe envision and even predict sometimes where the water will rise, especially considering the amount of work that's going on right now in the field by our operations staff in actually lowering those levels. And the reason we're not seeing a lot of this red area right now is because it quite hasn't quite reached that level, but also because of the work that uh, many staff are doing today. Uh, the other work that we've been putting together is regarding uh, wind and wave action events. And, uh, Looking at the, I guess really, we've really had two wind action or wind uh, events since the start of this, event, this uh, flooding event. Um, trying to determine, you know, what areas or properties are really prone to those high wind events and what kind of um, additional protection measures that they will uh, need to put in place to ensure that their properties are protected. So we will be presenting or uh, providing some wind and wave action mapping shortly also. Um, and in recognizing that these are property specific, I think many of the property owners will already have a good grasp as to uh, how much more they will need to go up, but hopefully this will help them sort of uh, bring that in. So um, that uh, really summarizes the work that the planning team's been working on, and uh, maybe Ron, if that's back to you. Thanks, Brandon. Of course, we'll be available for detailed questions. I'd like to call on Alan Newcomb now to talk about, uh, as the operations chief, how they're translating the mapping information into uh, changes on the ground. Thanks, Ron, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, so with the updated planning level that we have now for Okanagan Lake, I'm just gonna give you some background of the flood protection works that we've already put in place and also what new work will be, uh, be undertaking. So um, as most people know, significant work has already occurred over the past month within the central Okanagan, all the, uh, all the partners that we have. Um, including installing large pumps in low-lying areas to protect uh, key infrastructure, uh, communities. We have uh, in place kilometers of uh, barrier dams in, in various locations along uh, the creeks and the foreshore, as well as installation of gabion baskets and uh, a million plus of sandbags out there. Um, local government crews, BC forestry crews, uh, been deployed to inspect uh, the, the barriers almost on a, on a daily basis and particularly after last night's wind. Um, they've reviewed uh, vulnerable areas and, and make the necessary requirements and a typical day for the crews would be to respond to the calls that we've had overnight, uh, go out into the various areas, take a look at uh, the protection measures we have in place, do any repairs or, uh, or modifications to those, come back, uh, and then get um, um, tasks to complete for that day. So, uh, as Ron mentioned, it's not just uh, foreshore properties that are that are being impacted. Um, many areas are also being impacted by high groundwater levels, and, and Brent mentioned that uh, some additional mapping of that is going to come out. Um, but uh, as an example of that, uh, if you go down Richter Street today, just north of the Lakeshore intersection, you'll see uh, see water pooling on the roads right there. It's just a low, low elevation section of uh, Richter Street. And uh, this, as the next uh, couple weeks, month goes by, uh, I think it's important to note that you'll be seeing this in more and more locations where, uh, where the water table is going to rise to the surface and uh, I think, as Ron mentioned, that we'll have uh, could have periodic or uh, or sustained uh, road closures and or detours as time goes by. So um, we would certainly ask that people, uh, if they are pumping from their uh, from their basements, crawl spaces, uh, weeping tile systems, their yards, to uh, pump to natural areas if possible, and not into our sanitary system or into the adjacent storm system, uh, as those would already be overloaded. All of the local municipalities are evaluating the key infrastructure as it relates to the new planning number of 343.5 uh, and will be bolstering or adding additional protective measures to, uh, to compensate as that uh, as, as required as they find uh, uh, low spots in their system. Um, for example, uh, within the city of Kelowna, uh, we'll be looking at enhancing protective measures around the Kelowna General Hospital, including some uh, barrier dams and sandbagging Additional sandbagging at the mouth of Mill Creek was uh, was completed yesterday, um, and we'll also be reinforcing the existing protection measures at the mouth of Mission Creek. 
we're looking at uh, um, at the condition of Poplar Point Road, Manhattan Point, the areas around Lake uh, Lake Avenue, just south of the bridge. These are all very low-lying areas, so we'll be looking at that and seeing what additional measures we can put in place there. Um, and particularly the key infrastructure, pump stations, lift stations, uh, near the lake in, in various low-lying areas there. In Peachland, uh, currently there's a surveying going on along Beach Avenue, and uh, we're, uh, we're looking at employing uh, flood mitigation measures along Beach Avenue uh, in the low-lying areas. Um, and to just determine what the extent of that is with the, uh, with the survey information that we'll get back. In, uh, in West Kelowna, um, continuing to assess and, uh, and provide the, the flood protection and pumping down in the Green Bay areas and the Latley Bay areas and looking at uh, increasing those uh, as required. Within the regional district, the uh, Westside uh, Wastewater Treatment Facility, um, that's continuing to be monitored uh, every day and overland flow through, uh, through Bridger Park would be maintained uh, there as well. So we've been in touch with all of our, uh, all of those partners as well as uh, Ministry of Transportation, Fortis um, Gas and Electric, BC Hydro, uh, Interior Health, and uh, so uh, how, the, how can the residents help themselves? Uh, just make sure your properties are, are well protected. Um, again, pump to natural areas if that's possible. And uh, we'd ask the public to also stay off any of the flood protection measures. Um, you know, it, it, I think it's quite an attraction. I've seen a lot of kids jumping on the uh, barrier dams, and it's, uh, um, but just for their own safety as well as uh, protection of the, uh, of the measures themselves. So jumping, climbing, things like that. Um, and also if you notice that there's any um, of the protection measures, such as the barrier dams that you see uh, the water coming out of where, where it doesn't look right to you, please call uh, our, our number here at 250-469-8490. Uh, it's 8490. Okay. Thank you.